Hi, my name is Dan Pontefrac, and this is my Leading Remote Team series where I help leaders become better remote leaders through 10 specific techniques. Today's episode is the importance of empathy in remote leadership, and quite arguably, it's the most important, and quite arguably, it might be my favorite. Empathy. Think about it. Your team has been used to working face-to-face, -face, maybe a little bit of remote, don't know, that depends on your team, but if they're now all working from home, that's different. That needs empathy. Now, what I want to do is first talk about empathy itself and then get to some suggestions on remote-based leadership empathy. Now, empathy actually is kind of important because it's how you're looking out for those you lead but it's also knowing that it's as important as completing a goal. You're a leader, we get goals done, right? We accomplish them. But we need to look out for those that we're leading if we want those goals to be accomplished. If we're not being empathic with our team when they're now working from home all the time, those goals aren't gonna get done. So what we need to be attentive to are the needs, the thoughts, the history, and the feelings of those that you're leading. Now, did you know that empathy is actually in three forms? It's called cognitive, emotional, and sympathetic empathy. So we'll define each of these and get into some specific remote-based leadership examples. Cognitive empathy is basically when you are sensing with your head how the employee is intellectualizing something. Now, put simply, simply sorry, is putting your head in their head. How are they thinking about a situation. How are they perceiving a situation? So for example, with the COVID-19 pandemic that we're currently experiencing, how are they thinking that might affect them? Financially, socially, worldly, geographically, their job? They're thinking about this virus, whether they get it or whether there's an impact to them uh, in all the ways we just talked about. That's cognitive empathy. Now, what you might be familiar or more familiar with is emotional empathy. That's when you're able to essentially feel the pain of the team member. That's using your heart to feel for their heart. So maybe they're feeling down. Maybe they're feeling low. Maybe they're feeling anxious, scared. Maybe they're buying too much toilet paper. Whatever it is, they're going through something and they're feeling different than what they normally have been. And so your job is to be feeling what they're feeling. You're putting yourself in their heart. How are they feeling? Now, the last type of empathy is actually called sympathetic empathy. It's when you've observed enough in them, that's your team members, to become motivated to act. And what I use this as a metaphor is hands. You've now thought about what they're thinking, you felt what they're feeling, and so you're using your hands to take action, and thus you're sympathizing with their situation. And that's kind of key. When you add them all up, it's essentially head plus hearts equals hands. Use cognitive empathy to think how they're thinking. Use emotional empathy, empathy sorry, to feel how they're feeling. And then, once you've added those two up, take sympathetic empathy action and do something about it. That's going to require you to be patient and considerate because things are going to break down in your team, particularly now that you're working from home all the time as a team. There's going to be communication misses. There's going to be deliverable misses. There's going to be cuts. There's going to be all kinds of things that are happening with the organization. Maybe someone contracts COVID-19. These are dire situation times that requires your leadership. So you are going to have to put this math equation together quite quickly in order for the team to feel that you've got their back and that you care about their ultimate condition. Now, when you're not face-to-face, -face, you need to really be able to seek proactive clarification of a situation before responding, because you're not gonna see their face and their body language. You can't go over to uh, their desk and just get a quick hello. So, before you respond to the email or the text, 
or the voicemail you just got, or you saw something on a discussion forum, a community board, you saw something on the internet for God's sakes. Pause. And maybe before you react, ask, clarify, just make sure you get the facts straight before you venture off into going into Never Never Land. This question, I don't know why more leaders don't use it, but here it is. Hey, can I do anything to help you? Is there anything I can help you with? Do you need any help? That's empathy. That's the equation. What's going on in their head? What's going on in their heart? And can I do something about that? All in one nice question. So just ask. Don't forget about them. This is a time in which they need you to be that empathic leader. And what about just asking them, how are you handling the shift to remote work? Don't just assume that it's all going uh, hunky-dorily well. Probably not. Probably freaking a lot of people out. So, when you're asking how they're doing, ask them how they're thinking about the switch. Is there issues at the home? Is it too noisy? Is they don't have a quiet room? Is the technology bad? And then ask how they're feeling about waking up and going to work, which is just walking down the stairs, let's say. Maybe you don't know. Maybe it's in the, you know, the same condo. Maybe there's no quiet rooms. So what can you do to support them? You first by ask them, how are you doing in this remote working situation that we're all in? You know, even the matador sometimes has to think about what he or she is doing and employ a little bit of empathy for how things are going. That's another episode in the Leading Remote Teams Toolkit. My name is Dan Pontifrac. Thanks for watching.